welcome welcome everyone on board actually uh, yesterday we just started uh, pre eclampsia and uh, uh, we were we just discussed about the the main problems and what are the pathophysiology how will you like uh, quantify or uh, assess the severity of uh, either preeclampsia or eclampsia and what are the different challenges anesthetists will have so today we, was, uh, we couldn't complete the anesthesia management part oh. yesterday so to, today we will just try to um, uh, cover that part which was not covered yesterday okay uh, so uh, so uh, you know first thing uh, which should a question is being asked that uh, whether you should choose ga versus central neuroaxial block Okay, so if you have to defend GA, how can you defend GA? Yes, Sumera? Uh, sir, uh, in case of if we plan for GA, then we can say like uh, if there is a uh, uh, patient refusal for neuroaxial block. Very good. And uh, if, Very good. if there is coagulopathy, low platelets. Very good. And uh, any other uh, contraindication to uh, neuroaxial block, then we can okay. go for the GA. Okay, uh, these three things. Any any other thing you have missed? One thing. Hemodynamic stability. Very good. Because uh, as I told you yesterday, okay. that uh, as compared to uh, other patient, okay, uh, this patient will have more incidence of hypotension because of reduced uh, intravascular volume. Okay, so <clears throat> these are four, three or four. You can chalk out some more as well. So in that condition, you will be uh, choosing uh, uh, central, uh, sorry, you will choose general anesthesia. Similarly, now if we divide central neuroaxial block in two categories, one is spinal and one is epidural. Okay, so why, like there are some, of course, together things, but when will you choose spinal and when will you choose epidural? Anything specific? Sir, in case of if there is a plan for uh, normal delivery, and uh, uh, then we can uh, give uh, epidural at the start of uh, labor pain. And it can also uh, 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 blunt the stress response of uh, pain, like if there is these are eclamptic patients, so uh, hypertension, uh, sympathetic uh, activity will be blocked. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Any, uh, anything else? like post-operative pain, you can analgesia, you can give with epidural. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, the another advantage will be about related to hemodynamics. You can say a few words that uh, you can have a gradual effect. Okay. There will be more controlled on hemodynamics in case of epidural anesthesia. As compared to spinal. Okay. All of these things, like uh, you can blunt the stress response and uh, you can blunt, avoid the sympathetic uh, uh, activation, which, which is there, especially the laryngoscopic stress response. Okay. So, specifically, if you just compare spinal and epidural, in addition to human dynamics, there is one more thing for which spinal will be a better choice rather than epidural. What's that? Yes. Sir, if there is an emergency or cesarean section, then we can go for a spinal anesthesia straightforward. Yes. Okay, very good. There is one more thing. Uh, for how at how much platelets you can give spinal and at how much platelets you can give epidural? Sir, uh, if up to 70,000, we can give uh, epidural. <laughs> okay. And... Uh, for spinal anesthesia, we can even we can consider up to fifty thousand. <coughs> in some books, you will. <coughs> I'm sorry. In some books, you will find hundred and seventy-five. 
so actually this is a tricky question but the answer that is for example because the epidural needle will be big one okay it will be 16 or 18 gauge here you can give 25 or 27 even so the the if you have like plus minus chances so it is better to give spinal rather than epidural okay so because epidural uh, there will be more chances of uh, uh, complications because this will be a single shot and uh, even for example if epidural catheter is inside two and patient goes into uh, like uh, any any problem coagulation coagulopathy then epidural will be a, will be a bigger problem as compared to spinal okay so that will be some advantages of spinal sir so, so what will be the cause of deviation in case of epidural and spinal I'm sorry, again, please. Sir, what will be the count of platelets? Uh, if I'm not like wrong, in... it, is 100, it is 100 for epidural and 75 for spinal. If I'm not wrong, please reconfirm it. Okay. Because usually, I, I told you that uh, when we are in preclinical practice and not studying uh, practically, so the, what happens that I I don't give, uh, I will not go for regional anesthesia if I have, in, if I have any doubt of coagulopathy. I will, I will manage the stress response and I will not give regional. Even in the exam, you can say that if you have a doubt, uh, if you have a doubt that patient can have coagulopathy, you can defend in the exam that you will, you can give general anesthesia, okay? And do the risk stratification. Because in the exam, they, they are not asking you to give anesthesia. You can just tell that they, these are the certain recommendations. But of course, if you, there is a uh, uh, downward trend, then you should decide individually rather than uh, as like uh, on one reading, okay? Like or not, not on one result, you can decide. If the, the patient is going down and patient's condition and critical, uh, you, are, you are expecting that patient is uh, do, going towards help syndrome or things like that. So in the, in the exam, you can always defend your answer, okay? So for you, because specifically you are going for via for your answer will be that there is no sp safe safe technique. If you are giving spinal, this is the problem. If you are giving epidural, this is the problem. If you have uh, you are giving GA, these are the problems. Okay, yes, Doctor Media, what what what's your question? Yes, you raise the hand. Okay. Um, good evening, sir. Good evening, mom. Good evening, everybody. Uh, yes. Um. It's not really a question, but it's a personal experience about a patient with uh, uh, eclampsia. The patient Ecl was about uh, thirty. Ecl eclampsia, eclampsia. Okay, I will. I will just uh, reach there shortly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you are. You are. You are not there yet. Okay. 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 I, I thought the discussion was just much. Okay. No, no, All right. okay. no, 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 we, I will reach there. Okay. So now, now if you oh, go towards, right. towards general anesthesia, okay, so if you want to give general anesthesia, what will be the, what will be the problem and what will be the challenges in, in GA? Uh, sir, in case of eclampsia uh, during general anesthesia, uh, other than uh, uh, general challenges which are encountered in pregnancy, mm -hmm. we can uh, uh, face like uh, seizures. Mm -hmm. Patient may present with seizures and uh, hypertension. Mm -hmm. There can be more uh, more swings in hypertension during the laryngoscopy and uh, at time of induction. Patient mm -hmm. uh, may present with the uh, coagulopathy and deranged uh, LFTs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, yeah. of course, there will be difficult intubation and risk of aspiration. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah. anyone, anyone else, please? Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this kind of fish. Okay. Yes, please continue. Continue. I should continue? No. Yes, yes, continue, please. I will give you a chance, right. Dr. Hima. So, Just give me a, let Dr. Media talk and then I will come to you. Yes, please. Okay. Continue, please. Uh, okay, so uh, this kind of patient, you know, most times, as she, I said before, presents with uh, 
uh, uh, hypertension, they might present with seizures, and uh, you, they might present with other complications like uh, health syndrome, you know, okay. thrombocytopenia, okay. you know, they can present with the elevated liver enzymes. So this can, like the elevated liver enzymes can affect drug metabolism, you mm -hmm. know, and um, yeah, metabolism of drugs might be, might be low, Yes. Are reduced and uh, generally the bleeding tendencies can also be a problem because of thrombocytopenia. So and uh, generally we are prone to edema. You know, uh, yes. the airway might be might become you know edematous. Okay. So difficult airway is um, is a problem. So during laryngoscopy, they are prone to easy bruises. I've seen a patient that presents with petechial uh, hemorrhages. You know. So they are yeah, easy, they can easily bruise. Yes, petechial hemorrhage, pet petechial hemorrhage. Okay. So this patient can easily bruise when you are intubating. It is, the intubating is not smooth. It can bruise, it can bleed, and it can aspirate blood. So respiration pneumonitis is, a, is a, a problem. You know, they are also full stomach patients. So they are also prone to aspiration. If you don't give uh, prokinetics, so they can yes. aspirate during laryngoscopy. And all that. So, and um, even, even, yes, if you don't do a good uh, um, 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 attenuation of uh, pressure response to laryngoscopy, you don't yes. attenuate it very well. Yes. They are prone to increase in trachea pressure. And they can yeah. even have a, 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 a cerebrovascular accident on table. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yes, it can, it, it can be a prolonged, prolonged uh, recovery from anesthesia. So, yes, it's a whole, whole lot. So, drug usage should be you minimize drug usage. Sesamitonium, you minimize the, the dose of sesamitonium you are using, yes. you know, so minimize the dose of atracurium. To paralyze, uh, these are like uh, then they prepare for a difficult intubation. Your body must be ready, your fetal laryngoscope will be ready, even surgical airway equipment will also be ready for this kind of patient. So, a lot. Even neurosurgeon should also be in, 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 it must be a neurosurgical center. Yeah, maybe intervention by neurosurgeons, maybe um, some oral hemorrhages that can occur, they might need to do a CT scan and evacuate. So mm. these are considerations during general anesthesia for them. Uh, I think that's what I can. Remember. Excellent. Thanks a lot. I will just uh, uh, just recap what you told, and I will just add on few points which you missed actually. Uh, regard related to airway and aspiration, you will be giving prokinetics, and you will have ramp uh, position and all the difficult airway uh, anticipation. This is one thing. Mm. Uh, related to CVA and yes. raised ICP, as you told, that there will be chances of. Uh, so you should have you should have back in uh, in back of mind that this patient might need some neuro uh, neurosurgical intervention if any any complication occurs. Yes. You should be ready for seizures, yes. and you should have a bite block, and you should be having ready for medications for all uh, possible uh, sequelae related to seizures, and of course, patient will be yes. on magnesium sulfate. So you have to manage magnesium yes. sulfate monitoring and anticipation yes. because of magnesium yes. sulfate. There will be prolonged effect of neuromuscular blocking agents. And <clears throat> there may be yes. some arrhythmia if patient give, like you said about metabolism. So this is because of liver, but also not only metabolism, there will be problem in the excretion because this patient can have yes. AKI. Okay. Yes. So this, AKI, this, yes. like you I have, you are just correlating the things. Liver, problem with the liver, problem with the the kidneys problem with the coagulation okay and uh, like yeah. all other things because in ga the biggest problem will be stress response okay so you have to blood the stress yeah. now, now we will just discuss how to do achieve these things yes dr hema you were saying something please uh, you can speak out now uh, dr hema can you hear is she here or I don't know she left? Uh, anyways, uh, 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 yes, Sumera, you want to speak out something? So, all right, sir. 
yeah so now question to you is uh, how to how will you blend the stress response what will be different options to blend the stress response uh sir at the time of production we can uh, uh give uh, uh, slow and titrated doses of uh, induction agent mm -hmm. uh, so to prevent the wide swings in uh, blood pressure and uh, just, a the... just a second yes. just a second uh, you mean to say that you will not do rsi you will go towards modified rsi okay that's what yes, sir. Are... Okay, because if you if you are saying without this that if you are giving slowly that patient can have aspiration. Okay. Right, because sir. The concept of RSI is to give the pre-calculated doses, required pressure, and intubate, and minimum minimum laryngoscopy time. Okay, so this will be a, one of the factor uh, which is in your hand, other than medications and everything. And and also also this will be also part of it. You can tell that you will make the ramp position, okay? So that the laryngoscopy becomes easy, okay? So this will be also part of blunting the stress response. That you will make a proper positioning, and you will go from there. If you are saying that I will be giving the medication slowly, you should show that I will be opt opt for a modified rapid sequence induction rather than rapid sequence induction. Because I'm afraid that if I give okay, the pre-calculated doses, there may be because of uh, altered uh, vascular system, there may be sudden hypotension. Okay. Any anything else? Right. Any any other pre prerequisite? Would you like to do? Sir, we will uh, do the pre-oxygenation. Like it's a component of RSI. Invasive and, blood uh, pressure. Okay. Invasive blood pressure monitoring. If you, if whenever you are saying that you are expecting exaggerated blood pressure response, you will say, I will take arterial line. Okay. Because right, uh, otherwise you cannot monitor the blood pressure. Even if it is going too high, you cannot pick, pick it quickly. Okay. You are, uh, if you are, for example, because if you have the availability, you will uh, go, uh, you will go towards uh, uh, this one. Um, uh, this uh, what uh, you will go towards uh, you know i forgot I, because i'm distracted a little by this noise invasive blood pressure monitoring yes bl invasive blood pressure monitoring yes if you are giving for example remifentanil okay or if you are giving esmolol okay or if you are uh, giving um, like uh, uh, labetalol any any antihypertensive you are giving so there may be uh, bradycardia or there may be hypotension. So for that, you need in invasive blood pressure monitoring. Okay. Otherwise, you cannot control it. So, and uh, what else? We did, we talked, uh, I talked about remifentanil or fentanyl. Okay. Would you? Um, sir, we can also give lidocaine. Yes, lidocaine. Lidocaine, either spray or IV. Okay. What will be the problem if you give spray? There is there any problem if you spray with lidocaine, specifically in this patient? Aspiration chance? Yes, because if you if you anesthetize the airway, actually you are losing a protective uh, response. Okay, so that's why letting, uh, spray is not a not 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 a practical, not a very nice thing. You, it is better you if you give IV, okay? Practically, this is my suggestion, practical suggestion, because otherwise in books it is written, lidocaine spray or IV lidocaine, okay? So what will be the advantage if you are giving ramifentanil versus fentanyl? If you are giving fentanyl, what can be the problem? So it can cause test to allow rigidity. My God, I, I, uh, the, if, if you will be answering from the book, you will answer this. Anything else? Have you ever, uh, 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 I am using for at least 12 years, I have never seen chest wall rigidity. Okay, this chest wall rigidity is in very high dose. Okay. Hello, I know you're not. I know you're yes. No, I know I did not hear your last statement, sir. 
I, I'm sorry uh, if you can be a little loud because your sound is coming very less. Okay, I said I did not. I did not hear your your last statement. You made a sentence. You made a statement. I did not hear it. Yes, Are yes. I will repeat. I will repeat. I will repeat. I am saying that if you are giving fentanyl instead of Remy fentanyl, what can be the problem? Okay, problem can be. Uh, uh, you Dr. know, Sumera metabolism said or that it is of, chest. Of... Doctor Sumera said that it is chest wall rigidity. But I am saying Just that what? because Remy fentanyl is metabolized in the blood, okay, so there is uh, very less chances that there will be any problem related to Remy fentanyl, okay, because it is rapidly metabolized, so it will not cause any problem in the baby. But if you have given fentanyl, so, what, what about fentanyl? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. The fentanyl, because it crosses, it can cross because it's a lipid soluble medication. So, midazolam or fentanyl, if you are giving, it can cause respiratory depression. Okay, in neonatal. Yes, only for the baby. Yeah. But, yes, yes, but yes. because priority is given to the mother, so if you if you think that yes. it is and it is necessary to give fentanyl or midazolam, uh -huh. you will give and you will inform the neonatologist that I have given opioid yes. or I have given benzodiazepine so they can uh, uh, yes. respond accordingly. Okay, Sumera, you understand? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. So, uh, similarly, if you are giving uh, asthmalol, uh, like in the beta, uh, in patient with asthma, you will be taking care even libutalol, lidocaine we have discussed. Okay. So, ramp position, reoxygenation, acid prophylaxis, all the difficult airway equipment, minimizing the laryngoscopy time. If you have raw coronium and sugamatex, go for modified rapid sequence reduction. Otherwise, uh, go for rapid sequence reduction. Uh, that's it. That's That will be the problem. And then continue magnesium. You have to continue the magnesium according to the situation. As and we yesterday we discussed, I will just repeat again that if you have a patient on magnesium, you have to uh, monitor the levels. You have practically in the uh, like um, when the patient is already anesthetized, you can all you can have the uh, serial levels if you have the facility, and you have to monitor the neuromuscular blocking uh, agents by a nerve, uh, nerve nerve stimulation. Okay, because uh, there may be sensitivity, and you have to monitor the urine output. You have to maintain, monitor the ECG specifically for any arrhythmias. Okay. So, what will be the complication in uh, like uh, hyper uh, magnesemia? Yes, uh, you, you, you raise the hand. Please tell me what you are asking. Uh, excuse me, can we give hydrocortisone uh, to blunt the stress response or it is, doesn't work? Hydrocortisone, how will it work? It, it will have anti-inflammatory effect, okay? Yeah. So, actually, what is the, uh, uh, now, uh, I actually, I, what is the pathway of this stress response? Can anyone tell? Because it will be through 9, 10 nerves, okay? And it, then it will be going to the brain stem. Okay, and it is there will be some interneurons and it is stimulating the sympathetic discharge. Okay, how this stress response occur? This is the pathway. So, uh, I, I, I don't think so that hydrocortisone will help in this scenario. It will reduce the edema yeah, later on. Yeah, unfortunately, your voice is not clear. So if you can speak a little louder, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, that's, that's like you said. Yes, at a cortisol cause hypothetic stimulation and mm -hmm. cause hypertension. So that can also compromise the patient. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, not actually, really advisable. Yeah, you're right. But, but actually, hydrocortisone. Uh, hypertension relation it is also related 
that it will uh, it will cause the salt and water retention but it will not have yes. immediate like if you are giving a hydrocortisone her point of view that it will reduce the inflammatory inflammation and reduce the blood the stress response uh, i don't think so it will have immediate response okay i didn't i didn't know if you have some studies i think uh, uh, it's not uh, in, in any review articles i have read maybe there will be some studies on it okay so that's it that's it so um, like yeah. uh, what what else will be left in the management uh, there may you may you may need a patient hdu okay and as this patient is at more risk of complications related to uh, like uh, bleeding and uh, so you you can face this thing my question now uh, just raise the hand and i will ask you how will you detect uh, because if the patient is already uh, paralyzed and sedated, can there be seizure activity? Yes, there can be seizure activity. Yes. So how so can you, you make them? Monitor your you with your you your PIS uh, as, as spectral index. Uh, oh, as spectral index. This. So you use of. Uh, Practically, actually, nobody will use it, but of course, uh, with the neurophysiology monitoring, you can pick it. Or there may be some non-specific signs, like there may be tachycardia. Okay, there may be uh, lacrimation, just like sort of a side symptom, symptoms like awareness. Okay, this patient can have, and and of course, at the time of induction and recovery, there will be more chances. So it is advisable to place bite block. Okay, it is that always advisable to place an airway to prevent bite, uh, tongue biting. Okay, so I think uh, these are a few points which you should be knowing uh, when you are handling such patient. Now we will just have a look at the text and if see if anything else is there. Pathology part we had discussed yesterday. Okay, and some of the management any any anything if you think uh, we have missed anything please do do let me know because you know in uh, yes another thing in the mcq uh, they will uh, ask you as uh, give you a scenario and they and will be asked, use of the okay. i'm sorry okay um like if flu therapy flu therapy Intraoperatively, postoperatively, should be very careful with this. Uh, should be gets like a, a, a 0 0.8 to 1 mil per kg per hour or 80 mils per hour because uh, your capillary are, are prone to leakage, are prone to uh, edema. So yes. I've seen a patient where after, yes. after surgery. Yes, after you surgery, have to, you have after, to after use surgery. the, you have to use the fluids cautiously and you can choose yeah. for colloids rather than crystallites because colloids will remain yeah. in the circulation for longer time yeah. uh, as compared yeah. to and actually because of the involvement of liver if the, the yeah. liver is involved so maybe they are hypoalbumin there there is concomitant hypoalbuminemia yes uh, uh, dr summer and uh, um, uh, yes dr dora you are asking some question uh, sir, I want to know when I have anesthetized a patient with an epidural, yes. uh, I have given top up from epidural uh, mm -hmm. for a cesarean section and the patient goes and helps in Rome post-operatively within mm -hmm. last um, next 24 hours. Should mm -hmm. I remove the epidural catheter or not? Yes, actually, uh, it is better that you get the levels and uh, then uh, respond. Actually, there is no clear-cut answer for it. Okay. Because uh, if you remove and the patient is coagulopathic, there are more chances of development of uh, hematoma. Okay. So I think this will be an individualized approach and you should, it is better to, to track the, uh, the numbers or you can infuse. If you are, for example, if a patient goes and helps in Rome, of course, you will be treating no. with him. Right? So maybe you can create a window that you transfuse FFPs and you transfuse platelets and then remove. Okay. Yeah. Then, 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 then a regular 
point of care testing. Yes. Point of care testing of the coagulopathy, like the thrombo elastometry, very good. Elastogram. So this can also be a guide. You know, yes. it's a point of care. It's a small instrument. Like yes, so I, I got, I thought, I thought you are uh, um, like, uh, I, I hope that you got the answer, Dr. Summer. Yes, sir, I got it. So you will, you can monitor point of care testing or INR. Actually, it is available. So I'm just INR point of care testing is available. ACT point of care testing is available, not specifically in this condition. And uh, as we know, this thromboelastography or rotum. Okay, so you can follow with it and then you can remove it. Okay, so that's why, you know, if practically you ask me, I will never give spinal or epidural in such patients because we, are, we have a lot of ways to blunt the stress response. So if you have any doubt of coagulopathy, you should not give. In, in my, this again, I'm telling you that this is my practical experience or my practical advice, uh, uh, bookish, you have to follow the text. Okay. You, you know, the like in, in MCQ, when they are asking you the question, maybe they are asking you about magnesium sulfate, they are asking you about libitalol, they are asking you about the delivery of the baby. They are the decision of delivery of the baby is not an aesthetic decision. This is uh, this is gynecologist decision. Okay. This is one thing. And other thing is that whenever whenever they are giving you a scenario, you are what anesthesia technique you are choosing. Try to have the best. If they are asking you the best option, you will try to give the answer which is having the, the best or safest uh, management, okay? In that scenario. And the thing is that there is no fixed answer. It will be because whenever whosoever is making you the, uh, making the scenario, they will give you some hint. There will be some hint that what you should do, whether you should, you should choose GA, whether you should choose epidural, whether you should uh, choose spinal, okay? So that for that, you should have a, a thorough knowledge of the subject. What are the pros of and cons of each technique? Because there is no safe, safe technique. If someone says the spinal is safe or GA is safe or epidural is safe, no technique is safe. There are problems in each and every technique. And you just, you have to find the best possible or safest possible technique for that patient, okay? So, like, uh, in the if if even if we have a fits free period, we can give uh, regional anesthesia at that time as well. Okay, so there are so many pro uh, advantages which you can give uh, from uh, uh, epidural or spinal, and there are some advantages which you can give in GA. Okay, so that's what they have saying a contraindication to regional. And post ictal, we did not discuss presence of pulmonary edema associated with hypoxia, patient refusal. Okay, so this is the thing I think. Uh, uh, just tell me one thing, another question: For how much time you should continue magnesium sulfate? Sir, it should be continued for twenty-four hours from the last fit. Okay. After the delivery uh, of the baby. 24 hours after the delivery of the baby, whichever is the later. Yes. So yeah. again, uh, you uh, and another thing is that what other, what other options you, which you can have if you cannot give uh, magnesium, like phenytoin or carbamazepine or things like you that? You can give mm -hmm. phenytoin. Yes. Okay. So I think uh, we have just covered important aspects of uh, this topic and uh, inshallah we will continue our discussion for some other, maybe I will try to find some uh, in the same book if I find some other topic, I will just inform what will be the topic for tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow the class will be a little early, like around uh, 9, 9 p.m. Pakistan time, okay? I will, but I will confirm it tomorrow morning, tomorrow, like afternoon. Okay. So thanks a lot, all of you. My special thanks from my friend from Africa. Thanks a lot. And you have very good concepts. So I'm really impressed. And uh, like you are more special than anyone else present at the moment. Okay. 
So I will be very happy to answer questions from any one of you anytime. Okay. So thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. I, I, I say this thing to everyone that I wish to come to this your African countries and dance with you. I really not like oh. that. I really, I really uh, uh, like uh, this is one of my like uh, holiday dreams that I come to Africa and dance with you people. Wow, 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 wow. You'll okay. be welcome. I'll, I'll yes. be welcome. <laughs> thank okay. you. Thank you. Everybody, assalamu alaikum. Well,